Perfect peace is yours when your mind is stayed on Christ Jesus. Today, I am here with Matt, and my name is Angela, and we have a powerful program. Oh yeah, Angela, I am so excited about today's interview because this is not gonna be your typical topic. We're joined with Alan DiDio, who just wrote this book called Summoning the Demon AI, Aliens and the Antichrist. <laughs> We're gonna find out, is it all conspiracy or is any of it biblical? And the answers, honestly, Angela, are gonna blow us away. I'm, uh, Matt, listen, when I heard the topic for today, I said, mm -hmm. uh-huh, we got to keep our minds stayed on Christ Jesus here because right, right. these are big, hard-hitting topics. And mm -hmm. I can tell you, by watching today's program, you're going to learn all about AI and what its role is in Bible prophecy. We're also going to explore Revelation and discover what Satan's end-time strategy is. And we're going to learn how you can stand firmly against the enemy's deception and hold on to God's truth holding on to his truth yes. in these very big yeah. topics and spaces, Matt, is mm -hmm. critical for us remaining. Yeah, I mean, just with the digital age in general, there's so much out there which yes. can cause a ton of com confusion. And Angela, you said it best. The best thing we could do is keep our eyes fixed on the word of God. Yes. That's our more sure truth. Yes, the AI thing, I mean, all this news around it, I, I'm yeah. kind of like, we need to go back. Can we go back? Yeah, it's, it's wild, it's wild. I'm just like, what is, what is happening right now? <laughs> Absolutely. Well, today we also have Fun Friday, and it looks like we're about to have some fun with playing Stump the Host. Of course, sticking with our theme today, they have chosen for us to focus on the book of Revelation for these questions. Let's see if you can get any of these right with us. Question, Matt, here we go. Number one, who wrote the book of Revelation? We know this, John on the Isle of Patmos. Oh my gosh, uh, I almost said something completely different. Yes! Thank you for that one, Angela. <laughs> John, and that comes from Revelation 1, yeah. verse 1. That's good. Okay, next question here. The voice in the vision from Revelation 4 sounded like what? The voice in Revelation. Many waters? Is that, in Revel is that the Revelation the 4? Mm, I have no final idea answer. about that one. Is that final answer? We're gonna final get answer. Angela. Oh! A trumpet. Oh. Wow. Yeah, I should have known that. Yeah, we should have used, used a lifeline on yeah, that. Oh, one. we should have. Yeah. I forgot we have Alan yeah. who can be our lifeline. Okay, be prepared, Alan, because <laughs> it might be coming your way. Close. Our final question here Who did God warn the church in Thyatira about? Who did God warn the church in Thyatira about? Okay, Alan, um, we're going to ask you. Okay. I'm gonna try. This is a tough question. Jezebel. Wow. Ooh, Jezebel? Yes! Let's go! Yes! Jezebel, Thank that... God for a lifeline. Come on. <laughs> that comes from Revelation 2, verse 20. Alan, you have been our saving grace on today's yes. Stop Your Host. <laughs> Come on. Yes, thankfully. Well, hey, as technology continues to grow and advance, its main goal is to help us to accomplish tasks at a quicker rate and improve our quality of life. But what if certain types of technology had a different agenda and a more immensing one with evil and deceitful intentions in mind? Alan DiDio is our next guest and he is the host of Encounter Today and the founder of the Encounter Charlotte. He also recently uh, wrote this book called Summoning the Demon, AI, Aliens and the Antichrist. He joins us now to share more about the different types of modern technology and what we as Christians can do to hold on to the truth. Alan, welcome to Hope Today. Such a pleasure to be with you guys. And wow, that was, there were some tough questions there. I know, you, you know, when it's live like that, it's like, you just like everything Your brain your goes mind. blank. No. <laughs> but Many Waters is actually from Revelation chapter one. So you did good. Wow. Thank you, you Alan, thank okay. you. I knew it was from okay. Revelation. I didn't know if it was four. Yeah, let's go, let's go. <laughs> Well, Alan, thanks so much for joining us today. You know, okay, this topic is not your typical yeah. conversation piece, especially as Christians. And I think sometimes, you know, obviously it can be difficult to address. And so I would love to know, you know, why and, and how did this come about for you to write a book on AI, aliens, and the Antichrist? 
Well, I never wanted to be that guy, particularly the alien guy, because that's a whole nother world you dive into when you begin discussing those things. And like any good sci-fi story, there's got to be a Mulder and a Scully. There's got to be a true believer and a skeptic for all the X-Files mm. fans out there. And I honestly approach this with a, a sense of skepticism because I want everything to go back to the Word. And I saw so many people in the body of Christ going to extremes that I, I felt like we needed to just get anchored in the Word. And the interesting thing is, the more I got in the Word, the more extreme the Word was than many of the conspiracy theories that are out there. So wow. I want everyone to be anchored in the bedrock of the Word of God. And uh, so I, we go through all these crazy things from Project Blue Book, Project Blue Beam, Giants is a Smithsonian hiding evidence of giants to the Book of Enoch. Should we trust it? Should we not? And then, of course, uh, Area 51 and all that kind of crazy stuff. And we answer it from a biblical perspective. Wow, wow. Well, so let's start here because I think there's a lot of mixed emotions on artificial intelligence, right, with AI, and, and we don't know how to take it. We don't know what to believe or, or how we should feel. And, and I liked a couple of things that you had even mentioned in your book about what Elon Musk had said. He said, with AI, we are summoning the demons. We are conjuring something that we think we can control only to find out that it will turn against us. So mm. could you speak to that? You know, how should we take that type of statement about AI as believers? Yeah, people often ask why I named the book Summoning the Demon, and that's the, exactly the reason why. Elon Musk, one of the most uh, cutting-edge individuals in technology today, said literally we are summoning the demon. We will not be able to control this. Stephen Hawking said that AI could spell the end of civilization. So people don't realize. I, now, listen, I'm not saying we need to get our port, uh, pitchforks and run from it. That's not what we should do. We should learn how to dominate it. We should get some uh, some Holy Ghost spies in the AI camp to drop some gospel algorithms in the midst of all this. But I think the body of Christ needs to understand that 40% uh, of the economy is going to be upended by AI in a very short period of time. Wow. And over the next decade, potentially 80% of the world's economy. Additionally, people are saying that AI could cure cancer but at the same time, it then would spell the end of civilization. So we're balancing a kind of Manhattan Project type uh, moral um, uh, quandary here in the same way when they were developing the atomic bomb, they were wondering, should we morally, should we do this? But the enemy is going to do it if we don't do it. And so we're in an AI arms race right now. And 4,000 AI researchers were recently surveyed. And when asked, 50% of them said that they believed there was a 10% chance that AI would destroy humanity. Now, imagine getting on an airplane and 50% of the people who worked on that airplane said, yeah, there's a 10% chance you're not going to make it. And so we're, we're barreling into this technology very, very quickly. The advances are, are beyond our comprehension. And we need to understand this threat so that we can pray. And so that we can understand greater is he that is in us yes. than he that is in the world, yeah. which is a prophecy, by the way, concerning the Antichrist spirit. Yeah. Alan, first off, thank you so much for the research that you're doing on a topic like this, you know, to address it and the statistics, right? What's out there for everybody. But could we talk about this from a Bible standpoint? You know, what does the Bible say? Did the Bible predict AI? Now, we could, I go into some of the extra biblical sources when they talk about Nimrod, the Tower of Babel, and the potential of transhumanism in the past. But specifically, what do we know about AI in the future? Well, the book of Revelation says that the Antichrist in chapter 13 is going to create an image, an automaton, an idol that he's going to give life to, and that here's what the world's going to marvel at, it will be able to speak. Now, imagine trying to figure that out 100 years ago and there'd be no way to even understand what that's going to be. Today, we don't even have to question what that's going to be. We know exactly what it is and what have been the advances in AI. What are the breakthroughs in AI? Language models. The whole world is marveling at its ability to speak. And then, of course, we have the uh, predictions in Daniel concerning the knowledge explosion and the tech explosion uh, mm -hmm. that could happen in the last days. So this is very, very biblical. Wow. Speaking of which, the Antichrist is supposed to be able to control the world's economy. How is that possible? Well, you can only do that through an AI model uh, where in the first time in history, a few men in a small room could control the economy of the entire world wow. through artificial intelligence. Hmm. Uh, so if you know the Bible, then these things don't surprise you. They don't scare you. You realize that the end times aren't happening to us. We're happening to the end times, and we've got the victory. 
We certainly have the victory, and I love that you bring it back to that, Alan. My question for you with AI, so as believers, do we use it? Yes, absolutely. So when radio came out, the church said, it's the devil, don't use it. And so then the world got to dominate radio. Television came out. It had the antenna and the plug, so they said, that's the horns and the tail. That's demonic. Stay away from it. And now we realize how important it is. Social media, you guys know how hard it is to get churches to understand the importance of using and utilizing social media. In Scripture, there's a precedent for this. When David killed Goliath, it wasn't just from the stone. The Bible said he climbed atop Goliath's uh, body and unsheathed his sword. What is that? That's enemy technology. David used enemy technology against him, and we see this throughout Scripture. And so what we must do is, as long as we can, we need to use this technology to advance the gospel. Wow. Mm. And I want to backtrack just a slight bit, because I love how you, you, know, you did this parallel between the Tower of Babel and AI, Nimrod, or Nimrod and the Antichrist. And I think that perspective could really help us to address this or view this, you know, from a healthy standpoint. Could you break that down just a little bit? Those parallels and those things that you see are, are, con are kind of common. Yeah, Nimrod is the second Antichrist figure that we see typified in Scripture. And what does he attempt to do? He wants to build a tower to heaven, uh, potentially to create a portal of access to demonic power. He's trying to build this tower. And he's able to accomplish it because everyone's speaking the same language. So God says, I've got to stop this, and how does God stop it? He divides them. He separates them by separating their language. Now, what is AI doing? It is tearing down those separation barriers that God instituted in order to stop the Antichrist agenda. Now through AI, if you travel at all, you can use your phone, and I can talk. It'll translate, and they can talk. It'll translate. It's tearing down those barriers so that now the Antichrist agenda can begin to ramp up once again, and that's why we need to understand this. Wow. I mean, it kind of is a little bit scary when you think about it, but thank God, you know, the, the same power that rose Christ from the dead is in us, right? So I yes. want to switch gears here a little bit because this is, this is the topic that I think can go off in the world a little bit and talking about aliens and UFOs. I've grown up hearing about this my, my entire life. And so as Christians, what should we make of all the rumors or all the things that are going on out there? And how do we begin as Christians to explain this to somebody? Yeah, for the first time in history, we're seeing um, Pentagon hearings. I actually have them documented in my book. Word for word, you can get the testimony of what's being said um, before Congress. You can get testimony of what the DOD is saying. And it's, it's now, now it's mainstream. And people are asking, is this some sort of um, uh, deep fake? Is this some sort of um, intelligence agency? They're just trying to distract us? Or is it the real thing? And the answer to that question is yes. And the reason why this is so important, you say, well, I don't believe in any of that stuff. Well, it doesn't matter. These people believe it. Many globalists believe it. And we're going to see a rise in alien religions. And we already have them. Mormonism is an alien religion. I go through the details of that in my book. Yeah. Uh, Islam is actually rooted in an alien religion. Realism. Uh, our, our great friend uh, Tom Cruise is uh, not a friend, but Tom Cruise, <laughs> Scientology, believes in in an alien religion. So it's far more prominent. And then in addition to that, atheism. Richard Dawkins, who wrote The God Delusion, he said that he believed it's possible that life on earth was seeded by aliens. And so it's far more pervasive than people know. And so the church has been laughing at this for a long time. Wow. We need to give a biblical answer to this. And there is a biblical answer. Are there extraterrestrials in the sense that there are people from other planets? There's no evidence of that. Are there interdimensional beings? Mm. There is plenty of evidence for that in Scripture, and we talk about that a lot in the book. Yeah, I mean, we talk about that. I mean, we even see examples of what happened down in Miami, right, that mall, and what happened that family's home in Vegas, and they're claiming, you know, that they, they've seen something in person, right? So, so how would you begin to, to address that to, to not sound like you're so far left field, right? Yeah, well, there's two things. If you want to go far left field, there's a whole chapter in the book called Project Blue Beam, not Blue Book. Mm. Now, I give actual previously classified documents. I photocopy them and show you what the government's been hiding in the book. Yeah. But Project Blue Beam was a theory by a Canadian in the mid-'90s that there was gonna, they were going to use technology to fabricate uh, Armageddon-like experiences or alien invasions, these kinds God. of things, 
to get the world to rally because we've got this common enemy and we need to stand against it. So uh, th certainly it could be a conspiracy where globalists are using this technology that we now have in order to fool many people. Some of you have seen those green laser lights recently in the news mm -hmm. coming down out of the sky. And, well, we're just, we're just you know, it's, it's, we're just creating maps is what they're saying. And it's just some wild stuff out there. Yeah. But in addition to that, there are real people having real experiences with beings that are damaging them, harming them, and they need to understand the truth of what's happening. These are not aliens sent to help you. These are demonic entities that wow. are sent to torment you, and there's wow. freedom in the name of Jesus. Interestingly yes. enough, across cultures, Christians don't have these experiences. Strong, Holy Spirit-filled, Bible-believing Christians don't have these experiences. And those who do have them, if they mention the name of Jesus, mm -hmm. whatever entity is tormenting them, flees in terror. I find that to be interesting. Yeah, gosh, Alan, I feel like we've got to dive in that a little bit more because, you know, we hear all the things of, of people being abducted, right? You're talking about experiences, yeah. people being abducted by aliens. And, and you address about demonic oppression. You know, like, yes. what do you see? Like, why, why do you feel like there's this demonic oppression when people say certain things of, I've experienced some type of abduction? Yeah, there's a whole chapter on comparing um, alien abductions to demonic possession. And the similarities are startling and what really surprised me i was recently at nrb you guys are familiar with nrb national religious broadcasters and everybody who's uh, you know kind of in media in some way shape or form has a representative there the number of ministers who if i named their names every single one of you listening would know their name who came to me and said mm -hmm. i was abducted i had an experience with a ufo but i i, I said can i share that they said, no absolutely not you cannot share that because uh, I don't want to be that person. I don't want to go into that world. People are having these experiences. I think at one time it was like 3 to 7% of America's population has had an abduction experience or testimony. Mm -hmm. And so I go into the book what these things really are because the signs and the symptoms are the same. These abductions lead people into depression. They lead them into new age mm -hmm. as well as a whole host of witchcraft and pagan ideology. Uh, it leads to suicidal ideations and we always see that there's freedom in Jesus Christ. So yeah. I'm not saying that we need to get on the alien bandwagon and start every service needs to be about aliens, although I think preachers need to address this from the pulpit now. It's time, wow. and you have permission to do it because they're talking about it in the Pentagon, in the DOD. Mm. Uh, but we need to tell people what's really happening. If I can just say this, and one, one last thing, uh, Louis Zondo, who was formerly over the UAP task force in the Pentagon, was briefed by someone who had higher classification than him and said, you need to stop digging into this. And he said, what are you talking about? Why? He said, do you know your Bible? He said, well, yes. He said, well, then you know what we're dealing with. These are not extraterrestrials. That's why they're saying interdimensional and they're saying non-human now wow. because these are demonic forces. Wow. Well, we know what the Bible says. We fight not against flesh and blood, right? And, and we know in these times that the enemy has an end time strategy. And for us in 2024, what's something that you're seeing that maybe we should be aware of, or at least, right, that we should keep our eyes open and alert from? Yeah, there's, there's so much fun stuff in this book that can get concerning. And there's two kinds of people in the church, like when Goliath was tormenting the nation of Israel, there were those who were cowering in fear. Some of them, it was their first experience or revelation of a Nephilim, because, you know, Goliath was a giant. And so for the first time they're encountering this and become overwhelmed, what can we do? But then there was that one who said, something rose up within him and said, I was born into the kingdom for such a time as this. Yes. I was made, I was created to beat giants like this. And there's a whole remnant of people watching right now that something rises up within you. And in this book, you're going to discover the hope and Satan's end time strategy is this. Wow. It is to weary the saints. It is to wear them out, to inundate you with negative news, with one crazy thing after another that you feel like you have no control over. And I hear people telling me all the time, well, we don't need to talk about aliens and all this kind of stuff and the end times. People have more things that they're uh, focused on, they're battling. And my question is, are they? Are they battling different things? Hmm. Or are they battling the spirit of the age? Is the depression you're facing a result of not understanding the spirit of the age that we're dealing with? Is the financial difficulty, is the problem in your family? dealing with the spirit of the age. I believe if you take the cover off and get this revelation, you will truly understand who lives on the inside of you and the power that you possess in the name of Jesus. Yes, powerful, powerful. Hey, Alan, you know what? I just feel like we could take you know, this time. Would you mind praying for our viewers and for any of us out there that we would not be deceived, 
we would not be confused. We would have wisdom and revelation of the word of God to know how to navigate through these times. Yes, Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you that those watching right now are here for a reason, and they have been born to the kingdom for such a time as this. I pray that every word that they've ever heard, every scripture they've ever sung, every prophecy they've ever heard or received would rise up on the inside of them like a mighty seed growing up to a hundredfold and that it would explode in power and in revelation and that they would be filled to overflowing with your spirit, which is greater than the spirit of the age. We receive an end time anointing now in the name of Jesus. And I break that depression off of you in Jesus' name. I break that anxiety. I declare clarity now, peace in your home. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Alan, thank you so much for your time. And I just want to encourage everyone, again, this is not an easy topic, but grab this book. It will help to give you a lot of different perspective. Alan, thank you so much for your time. We're grateful for everything you're doing, all your research. I know it's going to be powerful. Oh, it's my honor. Thank you, guys. Well, hey, stay with us because when we return, we'll see what the Bible says about the signs of the time. We'll be right back. Discover what God's Word has to say about healing and deliverance. Best-selling author John Eckhart makes topical Bible study easy with his new book, Scriptures for Faith, Deliverance, and Healing. This handy reference is for those who want to have a greater understanding of healing and deliverance to incorporate God's Word into their prayers. Eckhart also includes targeted commentary to highlight key scriptures and life application. His Spirit-filled perspective will enhance your time in God's Word and encourages the spiritual disciplines of memorization and meditation. Request scriptures for faith, deliverance, and healing as our thank you gift when you support Cornerstone Television this month. Request your copy today. If you want to strengthen the ministry of CTVN, share your best gift by visiting us online at ctvn.org slash donate or call us at 888-665-4483. Thank you for your partnership. Hope happens here. Today's interview was so powerful. We believe that Luke 21 verse 36 is going to help you to navigate these strange times we live in. It says, be always on the watch and pray that you may be able to escape all that is about to happen and that you may be able to stand before the son of man. Wow. Matt, when I read that scripture, I know it's coming from Jesus and he's mm -hmm. telling us mm -hmm. to be on watch and to pray. Yeah. Yeah. And I think those two things you can implement right now, yeah. today, yes. that will allow you to face anything that you're dealing with now and that is yet to come. Yeah, I think the key here is prayer, conversation yeah. with God, time in the word spent with him in his presence. That's what gives us confidence, right? That's yes. what gives us assurance. And, and Angela, I'm just thinking that even this word kind of escape stands out to me a little bit differently yeah. in, in Luke. But I think when we hear topics like this, that the world loves to cause us to feel spooked out or yeah. freaked out about. I love how Alan addressed it. But this is our opportunity, right? Yes. To seize this yes. type of moment, run towards this yes. type of battlefield. I mean, Angela, in your opinion, how would you kind of attack somebody that's kind of confused or freaked out by AI and aliens and things like that? Yeah, I mean, I think it's just like scripture tells us that perfect peace is his whose mind is stayed yeah. on thee. You know, when we keep our mind on Christ Jesus, that he has the final say, yeah. that at the yeah. end of the book, we win. You know, when we stay there with an eternal perspective, mm -hmm. it's easy to approach these things because, you know, at the end of the day, I got victory. No yeah. matter what it looks like, right. I win. Right. You know, so so it shouldn't, it, it's okay for it to you to experience fear. That's natural, that's mm -hmm. human. Mm -hmm. But in fear, we have promise of total victory. Yeah. Yes. You yeah. know, and we can only get there if we stay on him who has the victory. Yeah. I think the fear that a lot of, of Christians have, especially when it comes to topics like this, is they, they don't want to come off as, let's just use the word crazy, Yeah. right? or nuts, but, but just being honest, all you have to do is, even if you don't know how to approach this, we have a more sure word of prophecy, yes. the word of God. All you gotta yes. do is go to scripture, right? right? Encourage people with scripture. What revelations are you pulling from? from God's word. That's how we address these type of topics, right? I agree. And like, it doesn't matter how our end comes. Like mm -hmm. death is the great equalizer, right? Yeah. For this life. Yeah. But 
it's coming for all of us. And so we have to be prepared to stand as the second part of that scripture says, before the son of man. Mm -hmm. So as believers, when these things are coming to your front door and people are asking you like, what's your answer? What are we gonna do? Oh my goodness. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I don't know what you're gonna do whenever the antichrist reveals himself if you're still here. I don't know what you're gonna do if AI actually takes over. Yeah. But I do know that in that moment, you can prepare your heart for yeah. an eternal home, no matter what, an eternal promise to reside and live with Christ Jesus. Mm, that's good. Okay, I just got to ask because we're on this topic. Yes. Growing up, yes. did you believe in aliens and UFOs? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. I mean, I think all of us, like, yeah. you know, you have all the movies. I can't even remember. I was thinking of one. Coneheads. Do you remember that oh, one? Oh my gosh. Coneheads. I think they were like what? aliens or something. Yeah. And yeah. so, yeah. Yeah, of course. Yeah. yeah. X-Files and all yes. these different types of things. You know, but isn't it just like the enemy that he loves to use everything from our childhood, everything that's in front of our eyes, right? Things that we see visually. I mean, the Bible even says that our eyes are the gateway, right? Our eyes are a window right into our soul, right into our heart, right into our spirit and our minds. So the encouragement today is you've got to watch what you're seeing. You know, with this whole topic of AI and, and everything that's placed out there, Angela, in the, in the digital world, our eyes have to be so careful like what's before them. Speak that real quick. Yes. Keep your gaze on the things above. Yes. Yeah. Let your mind rest in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. It doesn't matter if there's AI. It doesn't matter if there's aliens. God is above and beyond all of them. Yeah. So your hope can be anchored in all ways and all times to Christ himself when you keep your mind in those heavenly yeah. spaces with Jesus. Yeah. One of my favorite stories in the Bible is with King Jehoshaphat. He said, I don't know what to do, but God, my eyes are upon you. Listen, can I just speak to any of you that are out there watching? I don't know exactly what it is that you might be facing. Depression, anxiety, addiction, fear, worry. Maybe your family is going through something chaotic and it looks impossible. The answer just looks so uncertain. Can I just tell you, keep your eyes, keep your focus, your heart and your mind on God. Why? Because he is a man of his word. He always is good to his promise. He sticks closer than a brother and a friend. He's Jehovah Jireh, your provider. He's our strength. He holds you up with his righteous hand. And he has called you for such a time as this, just like Alan had prayed out earlier. Listen, I hope that today encourages you to not be fearful, but to watch out for the promises, the goodness, the purpose that God has for you and I on this day, on this moment, on this hour. Have a great weekend, be blessed.